Mom, I got a weird text from Dad. My daughter approached me, a worried expression evident. My husband was out of town on business, and while he had said to reach out if anything came up, I was puzzled about why he'd message her daughter. Intrigued, I glanced at the text, and the accompanying photo left me stunned. Beneath the image was a remark from my husband, teasingly predicting my reaction. It's a picture from yesterday, baby. I'll be at the hotel again today. In a fury, I left the house to meet someone. From that moment on, my husband was in for a tough time. I'm Sandra, and I'm 32 years old. I have a corporate job as an executive secretary, and I'm also a stay-at-home mom. My husband, Tony, also works in an office setting and is on the fast track because of his outstanding contributions. Our daughter, Stacy, is a first grader. She's a bit of a handful at times, but overall, she's turning out to be a sweet kid. Life seems pretty good with a steady job, a successful husband, and an adorable daughter. To outsiders, it might seem like I'm living the dream. But, behind closed doors, we had a problem. Tony had this habit of making offhand remarks to both our daughter and me. What's more, he genuinely thought he was being helpful. Tony and I originally met in a college group. I first saw him as this good-looking guy who always looked put together. But then... I wasn't really into him. I just thought it was cool having a handsome guy in the group. At a group outing, I had a bit too much to drink and felt sick. Amid the party's chaos, I was hesitant to step away. That's when he gracefully escorted me outside. When I expressed my gratitude, he just smiled and said, Don't worry about it. After that, I started seeing him in a different light. Eventually, I plucked up the courage to swap contact info, and he was on board. Things clicked. I shared how I felt, and we started going out. We stuck together even after college. We got married when I was 25. Life as a married couple was smooth, and many even said we seemed like the ideal pair. I felt on top of the world. But as time went on, I began to see things differently. He was no help around the house. We'd talked about splitting chores since we both had jobs. But he'd always come up with reasons, saying he forgot or was swamped at work. Tony... Why are the dishes and laundry still here? You said you'd handle them the other day when work got busy. And I even swapped tasks with you. No matter how much I called him out, it didn't seem to matter. His apologies always seemed insincere. I honestly forgot. I'm beat today. So can you take care of the chores? I swear... I'll remember next time. But he never followed through. Even worse, he'd ask for personal favors while deep into his games on his smartphone. Casually saying things like, Make me some coffee. Or, Get my clothes ready. Once after I'd made pork chops, he said, Actually, I was in the mood for steak. I'll pass on the pork chops. Whip up something different? I was so ticked off, I could have thrown something at him hard. Most of the time, I wound up doing all the household chores myself. I never thought he could be this thoughtless. In the midst of these trying times, we welcomed our daughter, Stacy. I held on to some hope. Perhaps, with a kid, 
he'd grow up a bit and step up. But I was wrong. Childcare was left to me. Sure, if I asked for help, he'd do it. But he clearly wasn't thrilled. Once I overheard him say, Well, you are her mom. It was as if he thought raising our child was solely my duty. Isn't raising a child a shared responsibility? Why doesn't he get that? Whenever I'd ask him to change diapers or give her a bottle, he'd do it, but be crushingly. If she got even slightly fussy, he'd hand her right back, saying it was too much for him. When I needed him to watch her while I cooked, he'd just hang back, engrossed in his phone. At worst, he'd just let her zone out with an iPad. And that was it. When bedtime rolled around, or when I asked for a ride, he'd pass, saying he was wiped out. On nights, when she was particularly fussy, he'd go to another room to avoid the noise. And weekends? While I balanced house chores and parenting, he'd sleep in, play on his phone, and just veg out on the couch, oblivious to our crying child. He left all the tough stuff to me, but wanted the fun parts. Like when she was about a year old and acting out, I had to lay down the law. Of course, she cried, but I believed it was for the best. Seeing this, Tony nonchalantly said, Wasn't that a bit much? She's just a kid. Kids will be kids. I think you're going overboard. As her mom, shouldn't you be more understanding? I can't even begin to describe how I felt then. I never wanted to be the bad guy with my daughter. Even though I had tough moments with her, it was all because I cared about her future. What could he possibly know? Always taking the path of least resistance and barely participating in parenting. Throughout Stacy's younger years, I held back from confronting him in front of her. But when she turned four, his attitude shifted. He started dishing out unasked for advice on her upbringing. I found out it was due to a TV show where a famous person's dad was talking about his parenting choices. The father said, I enrolled my child in many activities to develop her talents. Inspired by this, Tony suddenly wanted to emulate that dad. Honestly, it seemed ludicrous to me. Sure, that celebrity might have refined some skills through classes, but their success was mostly their own making. No matter how many lessons you push on a kid, it's pointless if they're not into it. I want Stacy to have a carefree childhood. But Tony, ignoring my opinion, enrolled her in a ton of classes. Piano swimming, and ballet. And he did this without even asking me. Naturally, our little girl was overwhelmed with all this stuff when she just wanted to have fun, leading to more meltdowns. While she did enjoy swimming, she wasn't into piano or ballet. So I let her stick with swimming and pulled her out of the other two. But when he griped, saying, Why'd you pull her from piano and ballet? If she ever goes into entertainment, she'll need those skills. You're depriving her of possibilities. If you cared, you'd have kept her in those classes. His nerve was something else. I couldn't even begin to find words that described how irritated I was at him. Our daughter never expressed interest in entertainment or showbiz. Why push these lessons on her? 
Later, I told him straight. I took her out because she didn't want to continue. She's only four. Playtime with friends is more important than endless lessons for her right now. Don't drag her into your fantasies. I'm thinking of her future too. Stop making me out to be the bad guy. She didn't sign up for this. If she doesn't want these classes, I'll pull her out. Count on it. He still looked pretty annoyed. Still, he went behind my back, enrolling her in gymnastics, French, and karate. But I pulled her out when she expressed disinterest. I wished he'd stop the cycle, but he kept it up. Then, when she turned six, he wanted her in a computer class, a half hour drive away. By this point, I was working and couldn't manage the pickups and drop offs. Despite me telling him this, Tony still signed her up. To make matters worse, he lied to my mom, telling her we both agreed on it, and asked her to do the driving. My mom, ever the sweetheart, said, Kids should learn all they can. I've got this. Which made me feel even worse. But to my surprise, the computer class worked out, and Stacy liked it. Just when I thought we were on even ground, he said, This is the digital age. Let's get Stacy a smartphone. She's getting the hang of the internet with her class. I was dead set against this. A smartphone for a first grader seemed way too early. I kept thinking about those online incidents involving young kids I'd heard about on the news. The idea of her getting caught up in something scary was too much. Still, over my objections, Tony took her to a store and got her a smartphone using our shared savings. He said he'd teach her how to use it, but whenever she had a question, he'd just brush her off with, Ask your mom. This all culminated in a big blowout, me yelling, I've had it. We only cooled down when Stacy started crying, but I was still seething. I even considered divorce, but thinking about our daughter kept me in check. A bit later, Tony was set to leave on a business trip for several days. He seemed oddly upbeat about it, which got me wondering. And then the next day, something totally unexpected happened. As I was prepping dinner, Stacy walked up, looking troubled. Mom, can you come here for a sec? I got a text from Dad. From Dad? What did he say? I don't really get it. There's a picture attached. Her face gave away her confusion. Why does she look so upset? It all made sense when I saw the image. My husband had sent a picture to our daughter, and it was definitely inappropriate. The photo was of a woman in just her underwear, wearing his jacket. I was dumbfounded. Under the photo was a message. This was from yesterday, baby. I'll be at that hotel again today. He even mentioned the room number. Everything fell into place. He wasn't on a business trip. He was having a fling and accidentally texted our daughter. I was livid. If my daughter hadn't been right there, I would have gone ballistic. I tried to calm her. It's okay, sweetie. I've got this. But inside, I was plotting. That jerk is going to regret this big time. After leaving Stacy with my mom, I headed to that hotel with some backup. When I got to his room and rang the bell, an overly cheerful Tony, just in his boxers, opened the door. Lisa, you're late. Wait, what? His face went pale when he saw me, and even more so when he spotted who was with me. Tony, care to explain? B ben? 
I thought you took time off for your, your sick daughter? The person I brought was my dad. As it turns out, Tony worked for my dad's business. The condo we lived in? Dad's name was on it. I chose to work elsewhere to be independent from family ties, so I had no clue Tony was on leave. My dad and I stepped inside, and I laid out why we were there. Grasping the gravity of his mistake, he looked crushed. My dad grilled him, and he came clean. He had started using a dating app after we had some disagreements, and got wrapped up with a younger woman from there. The woman in the photo was named Lisa, seven years his junior. I firmly told him we were done, and that I wanted out. My dad laid into him about what he could expect next. Freaking out, Tony pleaded. I'm sorry, I messed up. You're the only one for me, Sandra. I'll never stray again. Please, give me another chance. I was beyond disgusted. The cheating? I could almost move past that. I was almost grateful for him for giving me the reason for getting a divorce. But that photo sent to our kid? No way. Are you kidding me? You think I'll stay with someone who does something so sleazy? This isn't a good environment for our daughter. I don't want her around you. No, don't keep her from me. I swear I'll step up, even with chores. I want to be there for her. You can't even be a dad without messing up, and now you've gone and cheated? Save it. You're the lowest of the low. How could you send that disgusting picture to our daughter, for God's sake? Gear up for a divorce. Embrace yourself for what you owe me. He was a mess. But I felt nothing. Later on, I divorced Tony. Got a fair deal. And naturally, got custody. We struck a deal. No child support in exchange for him staying away from Stacy. She was actually relieved tired of his constant badgering about after-school activities. My dad, of course, let him go from the company. Where it is, even his folks cut ties after learning about his affair. No one's heard from him since. Without the boost from being married to me, he couldn't get a job. But that's not my concern now. My daughter Stacy is living her best life, free from being overloaded with classes. I'm not certain what she aspires to be, but whatever she chooses, I'll have her back. <laughs>